Okay, friends, welcome back to our online study in Ephesians. Today we're in the back half of chapter two. And what I want to point out today is something that is simple but also profound. And you may have already done the reading for today, and if you did, you'll probably say, I don't think there's anything simple about this reading today. And I'll give you that, but when I show you this, which is what Paul is really driving at here, it'll make those 10 or 11 verses make a whole lot more sense. Okay, here's the question that's gonna get us going today. What does Jesus accomplish on the cross? What, what, what happens there? You probably immediately think about how, in our understanding, of what accomplished on the cross, we focus on the fact that it's God's means of reconciling or fixing the relationship between us and God. Huge part of it. But Paul sees something else also. He sees that because of what happened on the cross, not only can we be reconciled, made into a right relationship with God, but also that we can be reconciled with each other. I mean, go, go back all the way back to the um, beginning of Genesis. Go back to the garden. What happens at the garden? There's a dual problem. After the fall, they eat the apple. After the fall, it fractures the relationship between Adam and Eve and God, but it also fractures the relationship between Adam and, and Eve. You've got a problem where not only are things off kilter between humans and God, but things are off kilter between humans and other humans. And what Paul sees is that on the cross, not only is the relationship between us and God reconciled, but also that the cross is the means by which our, our um, just, just human relationships can be reconciled also. That the divide between us and other people can be reconciled. And of course, there are all kinds of divides between human beings. The big one at the time of Paul is one that we don't think a lot about today, but it was huge then, and you've, you've got to see it if you want to understand the book of Ephesians. We've already talked about it once, at least briefly, is that um, the divide between the Jewish people and everybody who was not Jewish or uh, Gentiles, in the Jewish mind, this was the big divide. Now, you can also think about all kinds of other divides around uh, race or ethnicity or uh, social class or uh, a, a whole variety of things. But he's going after here the, the, the big one between the Jews and the Gentiles. And he says, in the cross, we are all brought together and we're made into one new body in Jesus. Think about a vertical reconciliation between us and God and a horizontal reconciliation between us and other human beings. You can think about the vertical bar on the cross, the horizontal bar on the cross. And because of the vertical bar, all of us being brought um, together to God, there is then that horizontal healing too, where we're all on a level playing field. Paul will later go on to say, look, in, in the kingdom, in um, underneath like the Lord, the shared lordship of Jesus in his body, there's no longer a Jew or Gentile. There's no longer male or female. There's no longer even slave or free, meaning we are all on a level playing field together. And if you're all on a level playing field, then we can be reconciled. Our relationships can be healed. So go back and read the back half of um, Ephesians 2 through that lens. And, and see what uh, Paul is saying here through, through that, the idea that, that humanity is being brought together, not just between us and God, but with, but with each other. Read it through that lens and really think through what does that say to you in your life? Is there somebody with whom you now have enmity? There's, um, there's animosity or hostility between you and another person. And might this be a call to you today to seek reconciliation with that person. Just as God is reconciling you with himself, he's calling you to do that work with other people. So spend some time reflecting on that today. I really think this is a good day to go back and read that reading a second time with this in mind and be reflecting on who is it that God might be calling you to seek to restore your relationship uh, with. So that's just a little bit about the back half of Ephesians 2. Keep with your reading and we'll see you next time.